All right, in this lesson we're going to look at the sign law. This is called part one because there is a part two which will look at something called the ambiguous case, but uh, part one of the sign law with relation to trigonometry. Um, first of all, how to get the sign law or what it means. If triangle ABC has angles A, B, and C being capitalized, so here's angle A, here's angle B, and here's angle C, and sides A, B, C that are opposite the corresponding angles, so side lowercase a, sides are always lowercase, side lowercase b, and side lowercase c, uh, if that's the way that the triangle is made up, then here's the sine law. Either sine of angle A over A is equivalent to sine B over B equal, is equivalent to sine C over C, or you could rotate the whole proportion and say side A is over sine of angle A is equivalent to side B over sine of angle B, etc., etc. Um, but we will be applying that sine law in a little bit. So that's kind of uh, how it's related. The angles are always used capital letters, and the sides use the lowercase letters opposite those angles. Um, in order to use the sine law, here's what must be the case. You must must be given an angle and its opposite side and one other angle or side. So let's move into two problems. There's always two types of ways to solve sine law. In some cases you may be asked to solve for a side length which is what we'll do first. In other cases, you may be asked to solve for an angle measure. So let's look at both cases. Uh, the first question says, determine the measure of xy, so side xy, to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So maybe what I'll do is call that side lowercase z because it's opposite uppercase z. So here's lowercase z and uppercase z. And what we always need for a sine law is to have some angle and its opposite side, which we do have. We have angle x and its opposite side here. Right, so since what we always want to do is first identify which version of the sine law to use. If we're solving for a side, uh, what you want to do is use the version that has the side lengths in the numerator. So we're not going to use this first version that has angles in the numerator. It's always easier to put the unknown in the numerator. So in this case, uh, instead of it being a, it's going to be z. So to set up the sine law, it will be z over the sine of its opposite angle. So that's going to be sine of 80 degrees. And that's equivalent to, and again, side lengths in the numerator, so that's going to be 12.5 over the sine of its opposite side. Always put the unknown, to, make, to simplify calculations, in the numerator of your first proportion. And now we can solve. So if I uh, multiply both sides by sine 80, uh, that will solve for what z is. So z is going to be equivalent to 12.5 divided by sine 52 times sine 80. And I would do this in multiple steps on your calculator uh, to avoid any mistakes. If you do it all at once, some calculators might make an error. So let's do the pr first proportion. So I'm just going to do 12.5 divided by sine 52. And at this point, I would hit equals. So close the bracket at equals. That's my proportion. Now I need to times that or multiply it by sine of 80. So there we go. Our answer appears to be 15.6. And another thing that's always useful, so z in this case is equal to 15.6 centimeters. We can also see from the picture that that seems to make relative sense that this length here would be 15.6. Case number two is solving for an angle measure. This says determine the measure of angle E if angle F is 60 degrees, side F is 5 centimeters, side D is 3.5 centimeters to the nearest degree. So first of all, let's label this triangle. It uses the letters D, E, and F in its question. So I'm going to assume that the triangle is triangle D, E, F in this case. Okay, and let's label the parts that we know. We know angle F is 60 degrees. We know that side F, which is opposite angle F, is 5.0 centimeters. And we know that side D is 3.5 centimeters. So that's going to be here. Okay, and in this case, what we're doing is we are solving for angle E. In this case, we can't solve for angle E directly because what we don't have, here's angle E, we don't even have its opposite side. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually solve for some other angle. So um, we're going to want to solve actually for angle D. Angle D has its opposite side length, and we also have 60 degrees and its opposite side length. So I'm going to solve for angle D first. Uh, let's put it in a, the numerator. So we're going to use the first version for solving for angles. Uh, we want to put the angle part in the numerator, so we're not going to solve using the second method. So let's solve for angle D. We're going to have sine of the angle we're solving for, which is D, uh, over its opposite side length, 3.5, is equivalent to, and I'm going to use the proportion that I know, which is the orange 
portion, uh, the sine of 60 over 5 centimeters. Uh, that's going to take two steps of algebra. So in this particular case, uh, first thing I would do is multiply both sides by 3.5 to eliminate this denominator. So we have sine d is equivalent to this here. And I'm going to do it in multiple steps on my calculator. Again, let's do the proportion first. So I'm going to do sine 60. Make sure you close that bracket or hit equals even and divide it by 5. So there's my proportion right here. And then, and then multiply it by 3.5. That's 0 0.606217. 0 0.606217. Don't round too early. Um, trig ratios are very finicky, so you don't want to round too early, you get a wrong angle. Uh, to solve for an angle, we need to take the inverse trig function, so I'm going to take the sine inverse of 0 0.606-2177, and what I can do here is just take the sine inverse of my previous answer, because that's already memorized in my calculator, and I'll get the angle. Angle D to the nearest degree is 37 degrees, so D is 37 degrees. At this point in time, so here's 37 degrees, um, we can find out what this angle E is. If we have two angles in a triangle, we can find out the third one. So uh, to find out what angle E is, angle E is going to be 180 degrees minus the two remaining angles, minus 60, minus 37. And that's going to leave us with a, an 83 degree angle. So here is an 83 degree angle. That is angle E. So just an important note here is to simplify calculations when you are using the sine law, always put the unknown side length or angle measure in the numerator. Simplifies calculations of the first proportion, which is what I did here. Always in the numerator of your first proportion if it's a side length, or numerator of your first proportion if it's an angle. Uh, that is all.